This is Valley News Live at noon. We begin with breaking news as officials say no criminal charges will be filed against a former deputy chief, Todd Osman, Almondson, who went undercover during a May gathering in memory of George Floyd in Fargo. Cass County State's Attorney's Birch verdict says the decision not to file charges against Amundsen was made after an independent investigation done by the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. Now, the images and the implications of the unprecedented siege at the U.S. Capitol yesterday are being seen and felt all around the globe. NBC's Kyer Simmons reports from London. Violence and chaos in the heart of Washington, D.C. This morning, a world that has looked to American democracy is looking on in horror. The angry final days of Donald Trump's presidency. Europeans this morning shell-shocked in London. It's outrageous, disgusting. That's when you have an idiot for a president, right? And in Paris. It's kind of shocking because, I mean, it's a, a center for the democracy. Hey a tear gassed reporter crowd. from Turkey, which they saw a 2016 attempted coup, stunned by what she was witnessing. I've never seen anything like this. Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel, Europe's most powerful politician, condemning President Trump personally for not conceding defeat. And overnight, a roll call of unprecedented statements from European leaders urging America's president to respect the election. The British Prime Minister tweeting, it's now vital there should be a peaceful and orderly transfer of power. The French president recording a video statement. We believe in the strength of our democracies. We believe in the strength of American democracy. The Secretary General of NATO formed when America saved Europe from fascism, calling yesterday's images shocking. The UN Secretary General saddened. America's international allies outspoken. Australia's leader condemning the riots. Terribly concerning. While New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern devastated. Even some of President Trump's closest friends around the world not holding back. The rampage at the Capitol yesterday was a disgraceful act and it must be vigorously condemned. While America's foes reveling. One Russian politician comparing these scenes with revolution in Ukraine. China's state-run Global Times claiming the bubble of democracy has burst. This morning, even on the streets of Beijing, one man telling us Biden is president, Trump should accept it. Overnight in Japan, small protests in support of President Trump, but its government too expressing hope for a peaceful transition. While Israel's defense minister writing, the pictures from Washington hurts the hearts of everyone. Officials say they are optimistic Biden's transition to the White House will go smoothly. Now we're getting a look this morning at the aftermath of damage after pro-Trump rioters stormed the U.S. Capitol building yesterday afternoon. Now in the Senate Parliament's office on the first floor of the Capitol, papers, folders, and files all over the office floor, and all the cabinets and shelves swung open. Furniture flipped over and there's garbage all over the place, just steps away from the Senate chamber and Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's office. Staff and Capitol cleaning crews spent the night sweeping up the mess and assessing damage with members of the FBI patrolling the halls. Several windows that were shattered have been temporarily reinforced with wood. There's a large sign that says treason laying in front of the north door of the Capitol. Fire extinguishers had been set off and a bust of Zachary Taylor appears to be covered in blood. Early this morning, President Donald Trump committed to an orderly transfer of power. The move came moments after Congress certified the election of President-elect Joe Biden. White House Deputy Chief of Staff Dan Javino released a statement from the president over Twitter, which says he, even though the president disagrees with the outcome of the election, there will be an orderly transition on January 20th. Javino used his own account to tweet the president's statement after Twitter suspended President Trump's account. Now, we could barely see on the roadways this morning because of all the fog, and it looks a lot better now fog-wise, but overall not as much. But what about these warmer temperatures? Let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green. 
Well, good afternoon. The fog is just being so stubborn. It's hanging around here in the valley. And some of us, we've had some improvement, but then there are places where we're stuck with it. One of those spots, I-94 rest area, the risk of rest area uh, near Valley City. You can see it's looking quite murky. Benford's improving. Uh, Cavalier still seeing some fog in the distance, but not so bad west of town. And in Fargo-Moorhead, the fog kind of moved in and took over here today. So here's a look at our visibility. Not seeing dense fog in Fargo, but we're at a mile and three quarters visibility. But check out Gwinter, check out Langdon. We are still at zero in these locations. And a report of a quarter mile visibility in Wadena. So the National Weather Service has been adjusting some of our fog headlines here throughout the morning as this continues to just take hold. And so first of all, the one in eastern North Dakota, it's been expanded a little farther east and does now include Cass County, including Fargo-Moorhead. And just, it was set to expire at noon, uh, just a few minutes ago. It's just been uh, extended now until five o'clock tonight because this fog, it's not going anywhere. And then down in the Otter Tail, Western Otter Tail, uh, Wadena County and into the Grant County area, included in a larger area of a fog advisory as well. And that is in effect until 11 a.m. tomorrow. So this is something that's just not really going away today. We're just gonna have to put up with it. And that's gonna lead to some travel issues for anybody who's having to drive through this. So we're gonna talk more about that coming up in your hour by hour planner and more details on the weekend forecast to come here in just a couple of minutes. Let's definitely take extra precautions on those roadways, especially now, even though the lights are out, I should say the sun is out, the fog is still pretty dangerous if you still can't see that far in front of you. Thanks, Lisa. Well, a man serving a life sentence for the murders of two U.S. Marshals who were killed in a shootout near a small North Dakota town nearly four decades ago wants to be released from prison after testing positive for COVID-19. 67-year-old Scott Fall has been in federal custody since 1983. He's in federal prison in Sandstone, Minnesota. Gordon Call and Call Sanyuri were involved in a shootout with law enforcement officers near Medina in Sozman County, which resulted in the deaths of U.S. Marshal Kenneth Muir and Deputy Marshal Robert Chestire. The Grand Forks P Police Department wants to alert the community of a high-risk sex offender in the area. Authorities say Michael McGee currently lives at 404 Oak Street. He has been convicted of aggravated sexual assault. Officials say McGee is a high-risk offender, meaning he is more likely to reoffend. McGee is a lifetime registrant. Well, coming up at noon, one group is making sure they don't forget about one of our most vulnerable citizens in America. And the fog might not be gone, like Lisa just mentioned, but we'll go ahead and enjoy the warmer temperatures as well. Weather up next with her to plan your day. This is Valley News Live.